This is 5-Minute Feng Shui, Episode 32, Creating Great Feng Shui in the Baby's Nursery. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. You know, some years ago, I became a parent for the first time. In fact, uh, it was just last week, my son actually turned 20 years old. It's hard to imagine how quickly he had grown up. And uh, it was just uh, yesterday, it seems like, that he was a little baby. You know, I was pushing around in a stroller and we were preparing uh, excitedly for his arrival by uh, decorating his room and getting it all ready for him to occupy it and to create that kind of warm and inviting environment that helped him rest because rest is absolutely essential to babies and also to make him feel calm, relaxed, and uh, able to uh, you know rest well, feel happy, feel nurtured and loved. And creating a feng shui nursery was obviously tops on my list. Uh, feng shui had helped me uh, move up a career ladder, uh, improve our finances, uh, change our lives, basically. So having the opportunity to uh, employ all that I knew about feng shui into into my son's nursery was really exciting for for me and for my husband. You know, uh, it, and it, it's like any parent, you know, getting ready for a new baby requires a lot of thought and planning. You know, everything from what diapers you're going to choose for your baby or all the way down to the the little decorations and theme for the room if you do something like that you know and and today's parents they they really want to create a haven for their little one so that they the baby feels comforted and nurtured as well as stimulated enough so that they thrive and increasingly i see parents going way beyond the traditional coordinated theme rooms and they're starting to incorporate feng shui to ensure that their baby not only has an attractive but also a harmonious environment that's going to lead to their health and well-being and that's really number one when it comes to creating uh, a, a bed a room it's a and it is a bedroom it's not just a nursery it's a bedroom and I want it's so important that I want you to think about you're creating a bedroom for a baby a lot of times we think about nursery and we think that they're going to stay a baby forever and they're not so you have to think kind of like okay how am I going to make that transition as they co- go from babyhood into toddler into you know uh, a young child uh, at least that's that's the way I looked at it I try to look at it as a long term because I wanted to see you know um, I wanted to see his room support him as he as he grew and as he as he evolved into uh, a child. Now, this uh, particularly was one very very popular uh, topic that when I very first started the Red Lotus Letter and writing and publishing online, this. Uh, particular subject I had written an article about it and oh my gosh I tell you I it went like wildfire people it blew up on the internet I heard from people from all over the world who had never really kind of looked at a nursery from this kind of perspective they looked at it more in terms of just the functional part which is very important you know changing table a chair a lamp that kind of thing that functional part but it's also it's so important to think of it as 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 it relates to your child's well-being. And that's really what we're wanting to focus on when we're thinking about uh, creating a nursery. So feng shui as a system of arrangement and placement that we use in businesses and in our homes is is absolutely one of the best places that you can use it is in the nursery. And it has such great application there. It proposes that by arranging and aligning your, your child's nursery correctly, energy flows better into the room, that uh, the baby will flourish and is 
it's going to sleep better and he or she's going to feel better and be a happier baby. And there, and there's absolutely no one who needs to, to thrive and flourish more than a baby. They have a lot of requirements, even though they're, they, uh, you know, you've given birth to them. They are, they are in an intense period of growing in that first couple of years. They're just, uh, just growing, growing, growing. So we really want to maximize the energy in the baby's room. And we want to think about all the important factors factors such as room location, the safety of the baby, colors, harmonious colors, and furniture arrangement, because these make up the foundation of good feng shui in a nursery. Well, in in pretty much any room in the house, actually. Plus, by using feng shui, you'll help to make babies less fussy, make them feel more comfortable, and promote their health and well-being, and just being a happy baby. I mean, you just want to see those little cheeks, you know, just fill up and smile. There's just nothing that can match the, the, the warm beam that comes from a baby's face when they smile at you. Um, so let's talk about what you can do in your baby's bedroom to, to give it good feng shui. Well, the first thing is you're going to select a good location for that baby's bedroom. A new baby really needs to have a, a bedroom that is not over a garage or an empty space below it. Uh, we want to make sure that the baby is placed in a room, uh, if it's on the second floor, that you want to always make sure that you check the space. So whatever you want to check at what's on the other side of the wall, what's above it, what's below it. You don't want to put a baby baby in a crib, let's say on a wall on the second bedroom, that it is just below it is the kitchen sink or the fireplace or a stove. You always want to make sure that whatever is beneath, beside or above the baby is uh, just a good solid room. It could be a sofa. That's fine if it's a living room, Uh, but we just don't want to have a toilet above the, the crib bed or on the other side of the wall from the crib very important that you really look at where that crib is going to be placed and like I said what's above it what's beside it on the other side of the wall what's it what wall is it sharing it's okay if it shares a bathroom wall as long as there's not a sink or a tub or a toilet on the other side of that wall. If it shares the same wall with uh, on one side uh, the the crib and the other side is a toilet or a shower or something like that, then that is going to negatively impact the baby. It could create some difficulties with growth and with health problems. So we want to make sure that we also look into uh, account that where is that baby located, that you don't want it to be in a place where there's excessive noise, such as, you know, next to the where the the TV is or so that there the baby isn't going to be able to rest and and enjoy uh, good sleep and good rest because that's so important now one of the things that we're also want to we also want to look at when we're we're working on a baby's nursery is to put the baby on a solid wall across from the door I, it's so important I want to emphasize how important it is to place a baby's crib just like you would any bed you it, so often uh, parents will place a crib on Uh, on the long side of a wall instead of putting a head of the crib against the wall like a bed Uh, and you need to treat the crib like a bed and not uh, put it lengthwise against the wall treat it like a regular bed it's so important that you do that Um, many times because and the the reason why is we want to make sure that the baby when you put the baby to bed you're putting their head up against the the headboard of the crib and the headboard of the crib is up against a solid wall this gives baby support gives baby security and it's so important that baby's in the command position so he's on a wall that that the baby can see the the door from the from the crib just like you would any regular bed. Now, many people will push a crib into a corner and this can create an anxious and fussy baby. If you put you know, many people think, oh, well, it'll be a nice solid wall on two sides and and uh, it's more secure that way. Well, just think about how you feel if you were to be symbolically backed into a corner. You're going to feel anxious, defensive, maybe you're going to be irritable. So 
it you don't want to have an anxious baby because then they're going to be fussier they're not going to sleep well and it's just it's not going to be suited for them the other thing is we want this is a really critical thing that and something that i've i've often seen a lot with clients is many parents will put a crib in line with a doorway and they do that because they want to be able to walk down the hall or and just walk past the door and peep in and see the baby from from the door it's for the parents convenience but here Here's what uh, it, we call the death position. I hate to bring that up talking about a nursery, but anytime you have a bed that is in line with the door, that is a very negative alignment and you will create lots and lots of problems for the baby. Uh, the baby may not sleep well, could have all kinds of health problems and there could be worse. So it's very, very important that you do not put the, the bed and the crib in line with the door. And that's the same is true with children. Uh, very important that you don't do that. So please don't put your baby that way. You will have a very unhappy baby and there could be um, some difficulties there. The other thing that we won't, don't want to do is put a baby under a slanted ceiling. And the reason why is that will push, the, push down on them. That energy of the slant is, uh, is like a pushing type of energy and many times what it will uh, will happen is that the baby will not thrive as, as well or grow as much as you might expect. Uh, they may also be fussy or may not sleep as well. So uh, do avoid any kind of beams overhead, um, slanted ceilings, that kind of thing. If you have no choice but to put the baby under a slanted ceiling, create a nice tall canopy that comes out from the slant and comes straight out. So it looks like a solid straight wall, not the slanting wall. And it actually is a really pretty decorative type of element as well. So that's an option for you. And again, uh, just to reiterate, we don't want to place the baby against the wall shared with a bathroom, a toilet, a, a, a laundry room, um, the stove, a kitchen, something like that. So we're always going to be looking uh, when we place the bedroom or the, the crib, what's on the other side of that wall, what's un underneath that bed and above that bed. Now we also want to look for soothing colors. Um, there's a lot of theory about, you know, high contrast uh, is stimulating for a baby. And my feeling is stimulate the baby outside the bedroom. Follow the same rules for a baby's nursery that you in, that you do in in a regular bedroom. That is, do you when you go into your bedroom, do you want to be stimulated? No, you want to relax. Well, so does your baby. Your baby needs to relax. Your baby needs to take a nap and to sleep regularly and sleep well. Let me tell you, um, I my my son, I had absolutely zero difficulties. <laughs> he is the most compliant, sweetest, most uh, easygoing baby there ever was. And that's not to say that he didn't <clears throat> ever not fuss about, you know, be, going down for a nap. But I would always tell him, you don't have to nap. You just have to lay, stay in bed just for a little while. And here's a book and here's a toy, you know, a soft plush toy or something. And it's amazing. Five minutes later, he'd be asleep. So um, that is really critical that we make sure that we create the optimum environment for rest and for relaxation. So these really bright colors, very vibrant colors. Um, I, I even had one uh, family with a hyperactive child and they thought that bright colors would be a really good thing for this child and, and um, painted all four walls in the bedroom, primary colors, red, green, one solid wall, giant electric blue, giant red wall, giant yellow wall. And I'd go out of my mind too. I'd be hyperactive as well. So opt for soothing, com uh, comfortable and comforting colors that are soothing and that are muted and are restful. This is what we want to achieve, right? A well, uh, a baby who sleeps well, will grow well, will thrive, will be happier. And that's what we really want to look for is to make sure that we uh, have a nice relaxed child. So let's also talk about uh, some movement in the room. It's really important that the room is not completely still, completely stagnant. Um, a ceiling fan is fine, um, some kind of movement, a mobile, but I really want to discourage you from having anything directly over the crib. Now I know I, I mentioned canopy, but a canopy is protective. Where 
as a, a ceiling fan or a mobile it, or a mobile is it looks um, it's a little bit imposing so um, if you want to do some sort of little crib entertainment or something like that get one of those that mount on the side of the crib that's a much better way to entertain your baby uh, before they fall asleep versus something over so if you but if you do want to have uh, something moving I you know even just a little fan I think is is fine in the room or um, you know have uh, curtains open so you can see the um, blowing leaves from the trees or something like that I think that's that's an, uh, a wonderful way to have a little movement in there now we also want to watch for anything that's sort of hard edges so like the like a corner of a room the corner of a dresser uh, any kind of uh, point or corner and we want to make sure that it's not aimed at the baby's body and particularly the head uh, very important that the there's no hard corners from dressers or changing tables that are pointed at um, the the baby and particularly not their head because this is it, it creates a harsh energy and it and babies are really sensitive they're, they're they feel things much more sensitively than we do their nerves are much finer so we want to make sure that you know we have the right kind of environment that even even things that look like they're kind of aimed at the baby we don't want we want to we don't want to have have that because it's just you know not a not a optimal thing we also want to look at what kind of symbolism we're putting in the room you know uh, and that's fine if you have uh, some kind of you know um, trees or plants or scenes or little animals uh, things like that but you know uh, really jungle motifs that have lions or tigers or bears or reptiles or any kind of thing that has harsh points like arrows or crosses or diamonds or triangles these can uh, be harsh actually so we don't want we want to have everything kind of like if you think about, you know, when you have toddlers, you always try to make uh, the corners, you know, check the corners of furniture so that they don't hit themselves on it and hurt them. So if you think about the design that way as well, you don't want to have any harsh points or angles in the design. The other thing that we don't want to have is uh, an excessively watery room. It's um, many times we see beachy scenes. I have one client whose son had asthma and, um, and he had a whole beach scene with whales and fish and everything all over the room. Well, that's just way too much water. Uh, I wouldn't want to sleep in a fish tank. And that's basically symbolically what this poor kid was doing. So uh, I asked her to paint a nice coat of beige on that wall and he was doing so much better so you want to make sure that um, th that you check those motifs with care and uh, especially when it comes to water because then you can end up with ear infections and uh, kidney problems lung difficulties nasal and respiratory issues so we really want to um, you know make sure that we keep that blue colors uh, you know not keep them balanced a room that's too blue can be feel uh, a little bit overwhelming so uh, we want to want so manage that a little bit uh, that if you can so look for those nice calm colors the other thing is we want to make sure that we keep lighting balanced uh, we want to make sure that the baby's rooms neither too bright nor too dark you know it's just like you would want it you want to make the room where it has some lighting and it's a pleasant level it's not too uh, you know too bright like an all-white room with a big bright open window it might be hard for for the baby to get rest you want it to have just a nice soft and muted uh, um, lighting at nighttime in particular you know you also don't want to have the the room too dark some parents think that if I keep the room really dark um, then uh, that that'll encourage the baby to rest but it, it can actually become too yin and that means that um, it, that can impact the 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 energy that the baby has to grow and to pull from so it's really important that you manage the lighting in there so keep um, keep it in uh, a mid-range that would be comfortable for you to take a nap at you know uh, so it's really not that hard uh, when it comes to to uh, thinking about lighting for a nursery you don't want to have it too dark it's just like Goldilocks not not too not too bright but just right you know babies are have needs just the same uh, as 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 we do uh, and um, 
but I, obviously they need a much more rest. And if it's too bright, they might not sleep as well. So these are some of the important uh, and key tips that uh, I wanted to share with you about a nursery. I know if you're planning a nursery right now, it's very exciting uh, for you. And uh, I wish you all the best with your with your, uh, your your new arrival. And but let's finish up with our three tips, as always. Uh, and that is tip number one: uh, never put the bed in line with the door. That simply is dangerous and can be harmful for the child. And we don't want to do that. So even though it's convenient for you to pop your head in and see the baby in the crib it's not good for the child treat the crib um, you know as uh, it's a very delicate t energy and it has a very precious object in it your baby so put it along the put it on a, uh, a bed on a like the same way that you would put a bed uh, always check what is beside above and below very important that you know what's on the other side of the ba of the wall from the baby's crib. We don't want to have a stove there. We don't have a washing machine. We want to have a big TV. Uh, you also don't want to have uh, a toilet above the baby. So wherever the crib is, make sure you know what's above, below, behind, and beside. Very, very important. And then lastly, uh, make sure that you put the baby in the command position. That means that it has a, the crib is up against a solid wall and the baby can see the door from the, from the crib just like you would want to have if you were in a bed. And this gives baby support. It helps the baby become, feel less anxious, feel more secure, and, uh, and you're going to raise a happier, uh, less fussy baby that's going to feel great and thrive, flourish, and grow. Well, thanks for joining me for this week's 5-Minute Feng Shui. I'm so excited for you and your new baby. Congratulations, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of my 5-Minute Feng Shui. Thanks for listening today to 5-Minute Feng Shui. Be sure to join me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Feng Shui Katie. And if you're really ready to move ahead quickly, head over to redlotusletter.com and sign up for my free 4-week e-course, 28 Days to Prosperity. You'll get daily lessons and tips on how to get unstuck and create financial flow in your life. Make it a fantastic day.